But if rumors are true, then the French Foreign Legion is operating in Ukraine. The Ukraine is also saying it to tell the French, welcome, welcome to Ukraine. You see, fight with us, actually put your money where your mouth is. While it is funded by the government of France, armed, trained, etc., the French Foreign Legion has troops from everywhere in the world. And you're allowed to join. I mean, even if you're a criminal, you've broken the law in your country. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. The Russia-Ukraine war does not seem to be coming to an end. It's been over two years. And uh, recently there have been some statements by both the Americans and the Russians which are a cause of worry for the rest of the world. And today I'm going to discuss what Vladimir Putin said and what uh, Lavrov, you know, the Russian minister said. But first, you know, Putin speaking at St. Petersburg International Economic Forum remarked that the United States of America is not looking, uh, you know, for the interest or looking out for the interest of Ukraine. It's looking at its own greatness. In the sense, what he wanted to say was that Ukraine is being used by the United States of America and its Western allies to somehow irrevocably damage Russia. And he said, you can't do this. We will not allow you to do this. And then somebody from Reuters gets up in that, in that press conference and asks that, you know, there has been a lot of talk about nuclear weapons being used. And do you think Russia will use nuclear weapons? And he says, don't think this is a bluff. Don't think this is superficial. Read our nuclear doctrine. If we feel that our sovereignty and our territorial integrity are a threat, we will use nuclear weapons because that is what the Russian nuclear doctrine says. And he also said that we have the capability of putting, you know, ballistic missiles, conventional, of course, very close to the United States of America. Friends, you're aware that Alaska is a part of the USA. You're all aware. Uh, you would also be aware that once Alaska was Russian territory, Russia sold it to the United States of America. And actually, if you look at the map of the world, you realize that uh, the distance between Russia and America, they're actually neighbors. Russia and America, the distance is not more than two to three hundred uh, uh, kilometers. They're very close to each other. So, can Russia initiate a nuclear strike against the US? Of course it can. Can it initiate a conventional strike? Whether it will or not is another matter altogether. But can it do it? Of course it can. It has the capability to do it and it does not require an intercontinental ballistic missile. It does not require an intercontinental ballistic missile. Russia is just next door to America. They're neighbors actually. Uh, and he said that we have a nuclear doctrine. Look what it says. This is Vladimir Putin speaking. And he says, if someone's actions threaten our sovereignty and territorial integrity, we consider it possible for us to use all means at our disposal. This should not be taken lightly, superficially. And now, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov states that French military instructors sent to Ukraine. Now listen to this very carefully. And this is again an escalation. He's saying French military instructors. There is, there is a... Uh, there is a force in France called the French Foreign Legion. And the French Foreign Legion is, uh, while it is funded by the government of France, armed, trained, etc., the French Foreign Legion has troops from everywhere in the world. And you're allowed to join. I mean, even if you're a criminal, you've broken the law in your country, you're a murderer, you've been inside for armed robbery, whatever. All you need to do is uh, reach France and volunteer to fight in the French Foreign Legion and you're taken up. They will feed you, they'll clothe you, they'll train you, they'll make you into a soldier. And uh, the French Foreign Legion is a legendary force. And people say, a lot of people say that the French Foreign Legion is actually operating in Ukraine. So I don't know which, which French instructors, uh, you know, Lavrov is talking about. But if rumors are true, then the French Foreign Legion is operating in Ukraine. And they are elite troops, they are crack troops. And Russia suddenly turns around and says that, you know, France is not directly involved in this conflict with Russia. But if we find your people there, we will consider them legitimate targets. You know, we will consider those guys legitimate targets. This is what, this is what uh, uh, Russia is saying. And it is saying this to the Republic of France. And Ukraine's top commander said last week he had signed paperwork, so, which could soon allow French military instructors to access Ukrainian training centers. So where does that leave France? You know, let's say a couple of French nationals, even if they're not foreign nationals of the French Foreign Legion, let us say some French nationals get captured in war. 
will they be treated as POWs? W what happens to French citizens? Killed is one thing, you know, killed, matter is over, killed. You can have deniability, you know. The French can always say, we never sent anybody there. He's killed, he's dead, dead don't speak. You know, the dead will not speak. But what about living Frenchmen? Somebody from the French military, he gets caught and the Russians take them prisoner of war. Then what will happen? And here it says that uh, Macron, who's France's president, he said that he would not comment on Lavrov's remarks. And there, are, there is no evidence that French instructors are in Ukraine. But the problem is that Ukraine is saying that we are inviting French instructors. And in So France is denying it. Ukraine is saying yes. And Russia is saying if we find out, we'll you know, take executive action. And then, uh, you know, th then there is no mercy if you enter Ukraine. So I don't know who's telling the truth, but Ukraine has been saying it. Maybe Ukraine is also saying it to tell the French that, you know, uh, welcome, welcome to Ukraine. You see, fight with us. Actually put your money where your mouth is, right? You're giving us funds. That is one thing. Put manpower on ground. Help them, you know, help us uh, with, with, with that manpower so we can fight the Russians better. But they're also telling the Russians that, hey, a multinational force is slowly gathering in Ukraine and you're not just up against the Ukrainians, you're up against the French too, even though in small numbers. Uh, notably, posters were seen on a bus stop outside the French embassy in Moscow on Tuesday that read, French, do not repeat the mistakes of your ancestors. This is very funny. Do not repeat the mistakes of your ancestors. I don't know if you remember, Napoleon tried to invade Russia. And like everybody else who tries to invade Russia, including Adolf Hitler's armies later on, uh, their end was not very pleasant. Napoleon's army got wiped out. I think they're, they're alluding to this incident where Napoleon said that I must invade Russia. And uh, there's this story that, you know, they said that, who's your greatest general? They asked the Russians, you know, the French asked the generals, who's your greatest general? And they said, our greatest general is General Winter. And there's a famous Russian joke, our greatest general is General Winter. You can attack Russia, the Russians will keep on withdrawing, they'll keep on withdrawing, they'll keep on withdrawing and then they will wait for winters. And as soon as it hits December, hell freezes over. And then there is no way an army can move. Armies have frozen to death. French armies, German armies, they're frozen to death in Russia. Temperatures will just go to minus 50. There is no way a human being can survive out in the open. You know, you can't have billets for, let's say, 200, 300,000 men. There is no way, you know, people, they, they sleep rough while you're on the offensive or you're going deep inside enemy territory, you sleep in the rough or you sleep under a tree or you sleep wherever you find. You might pitch tents, you may not pitch tents. Maybe you'll just sleep in the trench, who knows? So they're saying, don't make the mistakes of your ancestors. And... Uh, Putin warned against NATO's proposal to allow Ukraine to use Western weapons against Russia, calling it a serious escalation. He stated Russia's intention to shoot down Western missiles, specifically mentioning U.S. United States Army tactical missile system, ATACAMS, and British and French missile system. So what is happening is that America has allowed uh, Ukraine uh, for shallow strikes, given them weapons and platforms for shallow strikes in Russian territory, but not deep strikes. It's not like America is allowing the Ukrainians to fire a missile 3,000 kilometers into Russia. That they will never allow. Because if you do that, then as far as the Russians are concerned, all bets are off. Then the Russians are going to go really, really ballistic. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the question and answers. Uh, the first question is, Michael Lupu, he says, thank you for your support of Israel and for your invitation. The support I have seen coming from the people of Bharat is inspiring and touching. I must ask though, if Indian-Israeli relations are this good, why does Israel's Center for National Security website states India has a mixed security risk, level 4 out of 4, the maximal in Kashmir, excluding Ladakh, but also 2 out of 4 in the rest of the country. For reference, 2 out of 4 is as high as the UK, Sweden and Ireland, and surprisingly the Maldives. Thank you in advance and take care, Jayant. So, hello Michael uh, Lupu and Jayant to you too. And uh, you're welcome. Now, I think Israel needs to review. You know, the uh, Center for National Security, it needs to review. Kashmir is safe and uh, 16 million, 
tourists went to Kashmir last year. 16 million and it is expected to touch 20 million this year. So I think uh, this is old thinking in Israel because this was true once upon a time. It's no longer true. Kashmir is absolutely safe and, uh, you know, you should visit. And as for the two out of four occasional in the rest of the country, I don't think it. there hasn't been any case of anything against Jews in India. No. Yes, Jews, when, when Pakistanis, you know, Pakistani terrorists did 26-11, then, of course, uh, you know, I think some Jews were killed, right? But then so many other people were killed. So they were not specifically targeting Jews. They targeted everybody and Jews happened to be there, so they got killed. But, uh, I mean, Hindus got killed and uh, so many other people got killed. So it's, I mean, it's just one of those tragedies. What can one say? But I, I, I don't think this is a very accurate assessment as far as the Israelis are considered. Israelis have been welcomed everywhere in India. Or you can come to India, you tell anybody that you're a Jew, you're an Israeli, and you see the welcome that you get. It's totally different. It's totally different. Deva Jyoti Nath, it's confusing why Maldives is trying to make its closest enemy, its closest neighbor its enemy, which has supported and helped it for so long just for money and religion. The country has a high chance of being submerged in the ocean in another 30-40 years. Which country does it expect to help during this natural calamity? If Maldives gets submerged in the ocean, even India cannot help. I mean, what do they expect India to do? Fight nature? No, I'm sorry, that's not possible. Nobody can help them. And why is Maldives doing it? Maldives is doing it because uh, the senior leadership of Maldives is severely compromised by Chinese money. There's a lot of bribery. There's a lot of corruption. People have taken money from China and put it in their offshore accounts. And this is what the Maldives police says. The, the Financial Intelligence Unit of Maldives also says that, uh, you know, Mohammed Muju is a thief. That's what his own police says. I'm not saying that. I'm not calling him a thief. His police is calling him a thief. So, they're doing it for political reasons, of course. And uh, we'll see. As I, as I like to say very often, this is a game of cricket and everybody gets a chance to bat. At one time we were batting. Now the Chinese are batting. Tomorrow again we'll bat. It'll go round and round. There are, there are no permanent winners or losers in this. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, press the like button, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.